Helpful for life. Under the sea, under the sea, under the sea, under the sea. <laughs> uh, so, while we'd love to go really in depth into seafood, I can't go too far in depth right now because personally, I have just begun to discover the magnificent depths of the sea. Now, it's something that we've made a point of getting more into in recent years, especially when we go to regions where the seafood is known to be really good. So maybe in the future, after a little more field research and online research, we'll go a little more in depth into seafood. But don't worry, we're not gonna leave you high and dry because after all, we're under the sea. So we will give you a few tips here on what you need to cook while you're at home with some seafood and what tools can help you do that job a little easier. Now, the first tip starts when you're buying the fish. You want to make sure when you're buying the fish that it doesn't have a strong fishy smell. That ensures that the fish is fresh. Also while you're buying the fish, don't be afraid to ask your fishmonger, which is a fancy way of saying the dude who sells fish, um, don't be afraid to ask him to remove any bones for you. A lot of times they'll do that for free, but if they don't or you don't want to ask because you're a wimp, then just do it when you're at home. Go onto YouTube and type in the type of fish you have and you, I'm sure you can find a video to remove those bones quite easily. Make sure to use a tweezer or your fingers to get out those pin bones. They can be, they can be dangerous. Another option is to not be afraid to buy your fish frozen you'd actually be surprised. Some of the better seafood out there is actually frozen. They've come so far with the freezing technology and they actually freeze it out at sea right after they catch it. So they're freezing it at peak freshness. And actually when you buy fresh fish at the store, a lot of times that was actually frozen on the ship and then later thawed to then sell to you. So don't be afraid to buy frozen fish. When it comes to the flavor of fish, you may be surprised to know there's a huge difference in taste between all of the different species of fish. Now, one way to get a little bit of information about how it may taste is to look at the color of the uncooked filet. There's kind of a spectrum. So if you look on one end, as an example, there's tilapia, which is a pretty mild flavored fish, and it's also a very pale white color when it's uncooked. On the other end of the spectrum, you have something with a more full flavor which is salmon, and its uncooked filet is a nice pink color. Now, one of the downsides of seafood is it's not exactly the cheapest protein to be cooking with, and on top of that, it can be a little easy to overcook and dry out, and it's kind of delicate. So be careful when you're cooking it because you don't want to ruin any of that delicious seafoodness. One way to do this is to use a technique called en papillot. And that's just another fancy French word as we've been hearing tons of in this course. But what it means is you make a little packet of parchment paper that you cook the fish inside of in the oven and it gently steams the fish, reducing the chance of it drying out or getting overcooked. Now, one thing seafood is actually really good at is absorbing flavors pretty quickly. This is great for those of you who don't like to plan in advance and marinate your proteins the night before, but it can be a bad thing if you maybe leave something in there too long. One example that's not exactly a marinade, but kind of, is something called ceviche. And that's where you actually use acid from a citrus, usually like a lime or a lemon or orange, and that is going to actually cook the seafood. It's a pretty tasty and impressive appetizer. You should consider making it sometime. And if you're in Peru, they're kind of the OGs when it comes to ceviche, so make sure you try out some when you're there. One thing to keep in mind though, when you're dealing with raw or undercooked seafood, is it can be a little more risky to eat that. So if you're gonna do sushi or some other sort of raw seafood, just make sure you're aware of those risks. Oh, and if you're cooking seafood, there are a couple of tools you may want to get. The first one is a fish spatula or turner. And basically it's a metal spatula that's really thin at the end so it can get under nice and clean and it's a really long blade so that way it can get underneath the entire fish filet. You probably want to get that one. The next thing you may want to get is parchment paper if you're going to cook using that en papillot method we talked about earlier. And lastly, if you are going to be cooking on the grill, there are a couple of tools you may want specifically for that. The first one is a cedar plank. A lot of people like to use that to get a little bit of extra flavor when they're cooking their seafood. 
The second one is something called a fish basket. This is something that is good at preventing the fish from sticking to the grate, and some of them are even uh, contained on both sides, so you can easily flip the fish without even the need for a spatula. One other tip for grilling, brush the seafood with some mayonnaise, and it will help prevent sticking, and it will also provide a little bit of extra flavor. Check the PDF link below to see all of these tools and more, except for maybe the mayonnaise. Um, it's the same list that we talked about in the prep your setup milestone. Two last tips when cooking with fish. The first one has to do with the skin. Now, if you're not gonna be slow cooking it or poaching it, leave the skin on. Not only does it make it easier to flip, but it actually can get crispy and delicious. Oh, and if you're gonna be flipping the fish, make sure to cook skin side down first. The second one is to be careful about bones. Again, check it when you're buying and then also right before you're cooking. My dad actually had a salmon bone stuck in his throat for two days. Talk about uncomfortable. Speaking of salmon, make sure to check out our video later on in the course about cooking crack salmon. You'll be glad you didn't miss it. Okay, that's it for the animal kingdom. Let's find out what other sources of protein there are.